scroll with Brett. We are going to be live. and I'm the only one that's going to be, be getting recorded, so don't worry about that. It is anonymous. But we do want to get this message out there. All right, so everybody can get um, week two ready because we're going to be reading that. But there's going to be a couple of scriptures we're going to be reading tonight. So please, if you have your Bible, keep it in front of you because we are going to go to a couple of scriptures that the Lord wrote on my heart to share with you tonight. So, but before that, I just want to introduce this a little bit about this workbook. And you don't have this information. I'm going to read this to you. Okay? okay? This workbook is about transformation, okay? From death to life. From addiction to recovery. It is about walking humbly, righteously, and mercifully with God while accepting and doing His will. In our compulsions and addictions, we have opposed God's will by hurting ourselves, our bodies, and our loved ones. We have been separated from God and from other people. The 12 steps are a path to finding that humble walk that leads us out of self-centeredness and closer to God's heart. We will be examining the 12 steps individually to consider the challenging spiritual lessons that allow us to live free of bondage every day. Each step has a new task for us, but none of the steps is meant to stand alone. For successful recovery, they are meant to be worked in order. Each step prepares us for the next one as we develop greater humility and openness to God. Although the path of recovery involves hard and sometimes painful work, it is worth the effort. God will meet us on this path as we become willing to take each step toward a new life. As we apply ourselves, we lose our old coping mechanism of excessive consumption and experience spiritual growth. Honesty, humility, and courage are components of the vital faith that can allow us to face any circumstance, difficulty, or feeling with grace and strength. Amen? Amen. Powerful, right? That's what this will do. This workbook will transform you if you let it. And okay, so I want us to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to explain why we need the Bible also. The, step book, the steps will show us who we are, and the Bible will show us who God is. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. First thing we need in our recovery is truth. Okay, so we have to uh, we understand that we need the truth about ourselves, about God, and about the world. And it says in verse sixteen, all scripture, all scripture, is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. So our perception of truth from the world standpoint is wrong. The perception of truth that God offers us is in the Word. The Bible is truth, all right? So it teaches us what is true, and it's also there to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. So we have to understand, when we just try to do this step process without God, we don't really realize what is really wrong in our lives, because it's a hot condition. It has nothing to do outwardly, it's an inward condition. And the Bible shows us what's wrong with our lives. And then, and also, it corrects us when we are wrong. The Bible is very corrective in its nature because God loves us. He corrects us. Mm -hmm. Now it says, it corrects us when we are wrong. Not if we are wrong, when we are wrong. Right? And teaches us to do what is right. Now you know it as well as I do. We do not have to be, ta have to be taught how to do wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to be taught how to do right. We've been living the wrong way all our lives. That's why we need a Savior and to renew our mind with the Word of God so we can actually start to think different and actually start to do different and live different. That, that's why we need it, okay? And it teaches us what is right. Now, what does God use it for? 
God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. See, once we get saved and come to Jesus and we do this work, we clean ourselves out. And now we become of use to God. And he tells us what we need to do and he prepares us and equips us to do every good work according to his will and to be of his glory. See, we never glorify ourselves anymore because we know we fail miserably. It's all God's glory. God gets the glory. But if we don't read his word and understand his word, we can't get corrected, which we all need. We all need to get corrected. We all need to come to God humbly and admit that we're powerless over our flesh and we can't control it. Right? That our lives are unmanageable. And let me tell you something. Our flesh causes our life to be unmanageable. It has nothing to do with anything else but our flesh. Our flesh is the problem. It causes us unmanageability in our lives. And so we need to understand that. Now I want us to go to Romans chapter 7. And now I want to see what the problem is. God is good. All the time. God is good. Even when we're not. Okay. We're going to start in verse 14. Okay. We're going to get the real understanding of what we're about and what we need to do here. If we don't grasp it, then we're never going to get this. So the trouble is not with the law or with God. For it is spiritual and good. Now, this is where recovery comes in. The trouble is with me. For I am all too human. As being a human being, we have a problem. It's called the sin condition. We have a sin nature that we can't get rid of. It. Every time we want to do something good, we're a slave to doing the wrong thing. It says right here, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Mm -hmm. Instead, I do what I hate. Mm -hmm. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good, or that God is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So we have sin living in us. And I know nothing good lives in me. When you can humble yourself and actually tell you, everybody, that there's nothing good that lives inside of me, Amen. that is in my sinful nature, apart from God, I want to do what is right, but I can't. Right? I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So what he's trying to say here is that sin is, possesses us. You know when he said the devil possesses you? Our sin nature is what possesses us to do what's wrong. Even though we want to do what's right, we have this power inside of us that forces us to do wrong. Even against our own will. We're possessed with the sin nature. Now look what it says. Paul, after maybe 30 years of walking with the Lord, I have discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, verse 21, I inevitably do what is wrong. See, he knows that he can't do it in his flesh. I love God's law or God's word with all my heart. But he comes to the understanding in verse 23, but there is another power within me that is at war with what? My mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. So he was saved, he was already a, a child of God, but he still said this power makes him a slave to the sin that is still within me. After we get saved and born again, we still have a sin nature inside of us that we have to deal with. A lot of Christians think, I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. The proof of salvation is a changed life. Amen. That your sin nature is no longer controlling you. The Holy Spirit is. That's how you know, and that's a process that takes place over time. But that's the evidence that the Holy Spirit is in you, a changed life. Now look what it says. The, this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Can anybody agree what he's talking about here? Yes. Paul hit it right on the head. 
Now look what it says in verse 24. Oh, what a miserable Christian I am. Oh, what a miserable person I am. You see it? This is why Christians are miserable. This is why they're miserable. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Who wants the answer? I'm going to give it to you. This is a simple, very simple answer. Very simple. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if anybody, if I was to ask you personally, who is Jesus Christ our Lord? This is Jesus. Right here. See this right here? This is Jesus. So people just think, all I got to do is accept Jesus, I'm saved. No, this is Jesus right here. This is what saves us. The words of this book is Jesus' heart. We have to renew our mind with this every day. Every day. And if you don't read the word of God, you're, not gonna, you're never going to succeed in the Christian life. Never. It'll never happen. Because the power is in the words. That's Jesus. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ or the answer is in the word of God. So you see how it is? In my mind, this crazy mind of mine, I really want to obey God's word. I really do. My heart, I want to do the right thing. We all do, right? But because of my sin nature, I am a slave to sin. Now Paul was saved and walking with the Lord for 30 years at least when he penned this in. So we have to understand that our sin nature is not going to leave us while we're here. The thing of it is that we have to master that. And use the Holy Spirit to overpower the sin nature. Now we have to understand what our sin nature caused and what pain it caused in our lives. So that's why we do the step work and do the moral inventory. And then we make a decision to turn our will and life over to God. And which is we renew in our mind with his word so we can change. Mm -hmm. Something we could never do without him. We can't help ourselves. If we could, we wouldn't need Jesus. There's no such thing as self-help in the Christian life. It's all God's help. We can't help ourselves. That's, what, that's why everybody fails. We try to do it in willpower instead of God's power. Amen. And God's power is this, the living word of God. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. All right, one more scripture. Hebrews. Everybody know where I'm going to go in Hebrews? I think it's Hebrews chapter 4. I'm pretty sure it is. Verse, what is it? Yeah, I'm looking for that. The Word of God is alive. Is that Hebrews 4.12? Yeah, right? Yeah. This is, this is what we need to overcome our sin nature. Is everybody with me so far on this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me get there myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. But it's a good day. Amen. Look what it says in Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is alive. So we have to understand it's the living word of God. Once, before you get born again, it's the written word of God. Once you get born again and the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, it is now the living word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, the word of God is alive. Amen? We're alive in Christ. And it says it's alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between the soul and spirit, between the joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. See, the mirror is the word of God. It exposes what's wrong with us. Nothing in all in creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable to. Amen? Yeah. But let's just go a little bit further with this. Look at verse 14. Christ is our high priest. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. So we have, look, our belief has to be held firmly. We have to hold firmly onto this in order to recover. Can I get an amen for that? Firmly believe, right? You know when, you're, when you hold something firmly? You grasp it and you make sure you never let go of it, right? So you're going to get this. And never let it go. Because if you don't grasp it and let it go, what happens? Our sin takes over. Yes. 
So this has to be the power. See what it says? To what we believe. This high priest of ours, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, listen to this. He understands our weaknesses. Amen. For he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. How many of us, we fail all the time. See, we understand the living word of God. He's not here to condemn us. He's there to help us and empower us to overcome our sin nature. When we don't get the wrong concept of God, when you're living in your sin nature, you walk away from him. When he's saying, no, I'm going to give you the power to overcome that and I'll grow it. Just stick with me. Hold firmly to what you believe. I believe that Jesus freed me from the power of sin. I no longer have to continue in it. Amen. Amen. If I believe it. See, what, what keeps believers... From, falling, uh, from not falling into sin. Our belief system. We have to believe what it says. I have the power in me greater than the power of the devil now. Amen. And it's not a feeling. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. See, the devil always makes us feel that we don't have any power. Mm -hmm. So we fall to it. Yeah. But we're not, it's not about feelings. It's about our faith. Look, I believe that Jesus, if you believe the word of God, I have more power than the devil. I have resurrection power. I am raised from the dead. That's what being born again is. I die for that life, and I have a new life in Christ. Now I have to start learning his principles all over again. Mm -hmm. The principles of the Bible. I have to believe them, right? Receive them, and then I have to what? Apply them. If you don't apply them, you'll never overcome them, anything else. You have to apply what you're learning. And that's the process. But first we have to find out what's wrong with us. Because we don't really think we're that bad. So then when we do the step work, and then when we try to overcome our flesh, you don't think your sin nature is that powerful until you try to stop using it. Because when you're living with it, it's, it's fine. You know, you just your sin nature, you just do it. But when you fight against it, you see how powerful it really is. And you can't fight against it in your flesh. You fail. That's why we need the power of the Word of God. See, if the Word of God is not coming into you every day and empowering you, you're not going to be able to overcome your flesh. See, it's the Word of God that gives us new life. And, and if, you, if you just read it and don't use it or retain any of it, you're gonna, it doesn't matter how many times you read it. It never becomes a living Word until you apply it. Amen. It's just principles. It's just principles you read but you don't live by. You have to live what you believe. So you become what you believe. If you really believe what the word of God says, you will become a conqueror and an overcomer. But if you don't believe that, you fail all the time. And you can't go by how you feel. Can I get an amen for that? How many of us feel defeated all the time? Mm -hmm. I feel defeated all the time. I feel beat up by the devil every day. He's always tempting me and he's always using my weaknesses to try to get me back into his kingdom. I have to say what? No. That's not who I am anymore. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And that's to use these principles when the time comes. Not now. It's when the actual evil day comes. When you want to overindulge in something. When you want to change a feeling. And you, when you don't want to go through anything. And you go, oh, oh, end up going back to the world for relief again. It says, no, stop. Go to the word now for relief. If you don't go to the Word, you'll always go to the world, even as a Christian. That's why you see defeated Christians all the time, because they're poorly taught. They're not taught the Word of God and to live what the Bible teaches us. To be born again, and that's what we do here. It's the truth that sets us free. The problem isn't the world. The problem isn't the church. The problem isn't the building. The problem is me. I am all too human, Paul said. He put it right on him. It's me. It's not the way I was raised. It's not where I ended up. Look, I ended up by all my choices and my own decisions. The devil didn't make me do anything. He gave me free will to do it. He tempted me, but I carried it out. So he all goes back to us. That's what recovery is all about. Like taking responsibility for where, where our actions are. And not blaming anybody for it. Don't blame God. Don't blame others. And don't blame the devil. Everybody, oh, the devil, the devil. Yeah, the devil tempts you, but you carry it out. Amen. The devil's the tempter. Yeah. The deceiver. Mm -hmm. We're the believer. Yeah. We're the believer. Yeah. 
So we don't get the deceiver. Yep. See, the believer overcomes the deceiver. Amen. If you really believe it. The nation Israel didn't get into the promised land, not because they didn't know God, it's because they didn't believe him, that he could get them in there. And they had to fight many giants to get there. Just like we have to fight many giants to get free. Yes. To get into the promised land, which is a state of mind. Are we getting this principle, yes. though? Yes. All right. Now we're going to go to week two. Thank you for letting me share that with you. Now we, now we got something to go on. Yes. I'm going to read week two all the way through so the people out there can grasp what we're about who might want to you know, get involved with this. And then, after I'm done reading it, we're going to answer one of the questions, or two, or whatever we have time for. Okay. Week two, starting the journey. This workbook provides a practical way to use the 12 steps as a recovery tool and to fully integrate the steps as an ongoing part of our spiritual pilgrimage. The book uses biblical insight to help us identify and deal with issues that are interfering with our lives. Working through these issues requires that we rely on the dynamics of God's word and the 12 steps. If we approach this work seriously, we will experience recovery that nurtures physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. Trusting God's guidance is necessary. In this program, it is important to realize that God wants us to be returned to wholeness. He gives us the courage to work, to struggle, and to succeed. Mm -hmm. God also gives us the comfort we need to give Him control of our lives and to surrender to the 12-step process. If you are new to 12-step support groups, it is important to use other resources to help identify more specific issues that pertain to you. Many anonymous 12-step programs have meetings that are focused on issues of relationships, food, sex, alcohol, drugs, etc. Taking part in groups such as adult children of alcoholics, codependents, anonymy, or Al-Anon broadens your understanding of recovery issues and exposes you to others who are shift, who share similar problems. You learn more about your own issues and have a sounding board for matters that may arise in the step study. We encourage you to read additional material, yeah, the Bible, relating to the issues that are problems for you. This increases your awareness and enhances your ability to participate in the process. The self-help resources in Appendix 2 will help you identify an appropriate program for you. Other resources are also available through your library or on the telephone directory on the social service organizations or crisis intervention. Your story. Describe your past or current involvement in other 12-step support or recovery groups. Although the material in this book focuses on the individual, the most often used format for the book includes forming small family groups with a limit of six people per family group. Members of this group are not members of your biological family. However, they become like family for the purpose of mutual support in recovery. These family groups work together for a portion of the meeting and then gather with other groups during the final segment for general sharing. Workshop participation is an important step in breaking out of the isolation often experienced by adults reared in chaotic homes. An important part of this process is feeling safe in the family group. By using the steps as the central tool, along with the support of the family group, it becomes possible to express long suppressed shame, anger, and grief. The process involves the release and letting go of the past. It makes room for the one day at a time serenity and calmness that are a result of working the steps. As the title implies, the 12 steps are a spiritual journey. They can be used as a way out of self-destructive behavior and also as a laboratory in which to learn new behavior. 
The 12 steps provide an opportunity to experience feelings, talk openly with others, enjoy life one day at a time, and develop healthy relationships. Working together in a group can be a powerful and transforming process. Loneliness diminishes as friendships among group members develop. Individuals can learn to be close to others by giving as well as receiving comfort and support. Communication outside the meeting is a vital element in the workshop process. Use the telephone and other ways to socialize and support one another outside the regular meeting time. Relationships formed in the family group are a source of many benefits and rewards. The experience of being in a small family group creates an atmosphere in which healthy family type communications can develop. It is a safe environment where trust can be learned. The small family group provide an arena for quality sharing in which family secrets no longer need to be hidden. And the process of loving self-parenting can begin. Your story. What do you need from a support group to feel safe? Wherever possible, share your insights with someone you trust. Communicating your discoveries to a trusted person can work miracles in your recovery journey. The leaders of this group are familiar with the steps and their insights and experiences can be invaluable. You will be working with others in your family group who can provide support and encouragement. As you share with others and build new relationships during this journey, be aware that they are not there to give advice or to fix you. The healing results from developing a relationship with your higher power. During the workshop, Various issues will surface. Perhaps problems within the small family group will cause conflicts. These issues can usually be resolved without making changes within the group. The struggles within each family group often reflect the roles and reaction from the family of origin. Leaving the groups intact for the duration of the workshop allows participants to resolve their conflicts, foster growth, and strengthen the bonds within the family group. As participants surrender to the guidance of, from God, problems are handled more constructively. As adults from dysfunctional backgrounds, we rely on the familiar behaviors of being caretakers, enablers, or people pleasers. This is usually because of our inability to confront inappropriate, hurtful, or self-defeating be behavior. Instead, we tend to be overly nice to each other. <laughs> <laughs> in keeping with the need for a safe environment, excessive confrontation is usually not required for the family group members to alter old patterns of behavior. However, straightforward feedback is critically important. Our communication is most useful when we share our personal experience in a situation similar to the issue at hand. Due to our early exposure to negative behavior, many inappropriate behaviors may appear normal to us. Resentment, greed, sexual abuse, dishonesty, gluttony, envy, laziness. Negative feelings may also seem normal. Self-pity, sadness, insecurity, worry, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. As we progress through the steps, this habit of seeing negative feelings or behavior as normal will change. We will experience growth in all areas by an increased sense of self-worth and self-esteem. Therefore, honest feelings and thoughts need to be appreciated and encouraged. This makes it possible to air elements of discouragement or distress before they hinder the group's progress. Your story. What behaviors do you fear most when you participate in this group? This may be yours or someone else's. Anger, isolation, competitiveness, control, etc. Using this book, at the beginning of each step, there is a step overview with the following elements. Understanding the step, working the step, preparing for the step, and prayer for the step. Next, there is a step 
narrative followed by personal reflection, which begins the steps writing exercise. Carefully read the narrative in the personal reflection section before answering the questions. Note any areas that are unclear to you and seek assistance if needed. Then turn to the personal reflection section and answer the questions. If you feel a question does not apply to you, it is not necessary to answer it. Remember, it is your book and it is your right to use the book to your benefit. Throughout each step, there are helpful hints. These are intended as aids in understanding the scripture or question. The helpful hints refer to the Life Recovery Bible by Tyndale House Publishers, Meditations for the 12 Steps, A Spiritual Journey, and Prayers for the 12 Steps, A Spiritual Journey by RPI Publishing. At the conclusion of each step, there is a section entitled Key Ideas. This section will help you recall the important concepts from each step. Many of the key ideas center around important words from the step. In this edition, the weekly writing exercises that were previously in the appendix have been incorporated into the step. The focus and sharing is on the work done in the step. The weekly meeting formats are in appendix one. The serenity prayer, milestones in recovery, 12 steps and related scriptures and common behavior characteristics are in Appendix 3. To support this process, we have added a section called Preparing for Community. This section provides specific questions to aid group interaction. The, suge the suggested group activities are included to provide ideas for group exercises to illustrate or reinforce important aspects of each step and it provides an opportunity for fun. Some activities are spiritual in nature, some are relational, others are emotional, and still others have a physical element. The group activities are also intended to enliven and to support the group experience. As you proceed through the steps, pace yourself and complete as much of each step as possible. Don't be discouraged if steps one, two, and three seem overwhelming to you. This is a common reaction for persons who are new to the steps. Completion of these three steps forms the foundation for working the program. Allow sufficient time to go through the process of thinking about the questions and exercises. Do a little each day. This may take several days, a week, or longer. Be patient with yourself. Allow ample time to digest the content of each question and reflect on its meaning. Impatience can seriously impair your effectiveness. You may decide to participate, to participate in a step study writing workshop more than once. The program is a lifelong process to be used regularly, in part or in whole. This workbook should not be your only involvement, it's just one part of working the 12 steps. The 12 step material used in this book is a framework upon which our own life experiences can be reviewed with love and courage. We realize we have reached this point knowing very little about ourselves. As we develop a deeper relationship with God, more will be revealed to us. Slowly we will be given the strength to put the past behind us and build a new life. The depth of our relationship with God will be increased as our knowledge of him increases. Psalm 119. Our lives can be less complicated if we work the steps regularly and continue to improve our relationship with our higher power. When we do this, our lives are blessed with the ongoing gift of God's peace, and serenity, John 14, 27. Give freely of yourself and join us. We shall be with you in the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit. The participation agreement. The participation agreement establishes our personal commitment during this workshop. Accepting them is your choice. The level of individual success, however, will depend on each person's commitment 
to the process in cooperation with the group. <clears throat> the participation agreement will be signed in each family group member's book during week four. Following is a preview of the agreement with brief explanations to clarify each statement and its value. I agree to fully participate with my family group in working the 12 steps. As part of the agreement, I will make this workshop a priority in my life for the designated number of weeks. Making the workshop a priority means planning our calendars in advance to avoid conflicts with other events or activities. It also means working hard to provide time and energy for all of the requirements of the step study process. Participate fully in the group's work, discussions, activities, assignments, and projects. Participating fully with our family group requires a serious attitude and sincere commitment. Half-heartedness will undermine our own recovery as well as the group's overall success. Share my experience, strength, and hope during the meeting. One of the fundamental strengths of any 12-step program is the shared experience, strength, and hope of its members. When we share our story with others, we allow others to hear of our experience, to learn from our mistakes, to identify with our struggles, to share our hope, and to feel a sense of community and belonging. Study the steps as thoroughly as possible by scheduling extra time for step work, reading additional materials, attending other 12-step meetings, and discussing the steps with more experienced members. We cannot get a full understanding of the 12-step process just from our involvement in one meeting or workshop experience. We need to expose ourselves to a variety of resources. Maintain contact with my family group members between meetings in order to foster the fellowship communication and support that is developed in the meetings. Because of the problems that many of us experience with our biological family, it is important to establish healthy and nurturing relationships with our family group members. We cannot experience recovery by ourselves, and relationships cannot grow without consistent contact. We need others to help us break through the denial and isolation that have affected our lives. Support my family group members individually by giving them my respectful attention, emotional support, and spiritual fellowship. The golden rule which admonishes us to treat others as we want to be treated is a good rule for our interaction with family group members. When others speak in a meeting, we should give them undivided attention. When they are hurting, we should lend support and comfort. At, and at all times, we should give them a spiritual fellowship. Be as honest as possible in all things, especially with regard to what I am learning about myself, mm. past and present. Because denial is a common problem that all of us in recovery face, we need to commit ourselves to honesty. We all want the respect and approval of others but in the family group context, we must strive to be honest about ourselves and less concerned about our image. Amen. That's a big one right there. Mm -hmm. Express my feelings about myself, my family group, and its members, my recovery, and my relationship with God. Feelings need to be expressed, and the family group can be a safe place for that expression. Mm -hmm. It is an opportunity to talk about personal feelings, as well as feelings that relate to other family group members. For example, if we feel discomfort when someone uses excessive volume or profanity in the meeting, we should express our feelings to the group. Accept any discomfort or unsettling behavior changes that I may experience as a result of working the 12 steps. Working the 12 steps is not easy. Surrender to God self-examination, confession, amends, and other 12-step work all represent major life changes. And these changes can cause us discomfort along the way. Our commitment to recovery includes a willingness 
to accept discomfort in the process. Humbly submit to the recovery process. Our wrongful pride in character defects can cause us to exert undue control over every aspect of our recovery process. If we allow that to happen, we will hinder our recovery and damage our family group's harmony. Instead, humility is needed. We should humbly submit to the principles and process of the 12 steps and to the ground rules which have been established for the group. Remember that God loves me and wants me to succeed and that my ultimate goal is to experience God's will in my life. The 12 steps will not work apart from God. Real healing begins when we surrender our will and our lives to God. But that surrender is impossible without the conviction that God loves us and wants what is best for us. We need to, be, to remind ourselves and others that God is good and his will is best. Pray, meditate, and work the first three steps daily. Because the 12 steps are spiritual, we must be committed to maintaining contact with God through prayer and meditation. We must also be committed to the daily surrendering process of the first three steps, through which we admit our need, believe in God's ability, and surrender to his control. Participation Agreement I agree to fully participate with my family group in working the 12 steps. As part of my agreement, I will make this workshop a priority in my life for the designated number of weeks, participate fully in the group's work, discussions, activities, assignments, and projects, share my experience, strength, and hope during the meeting, study the steps as thoroughly as possible by scheduling extra time for step work, reading additional materials, attending other 12-step meetings, and discussing the steps with more experienced members. Maintain contact with my family group members between meetings in order to foster the fellowship, communication, and support that is developed in the meetings. Support my family group members individually by giving them my respectful attention, emotional support, and spiritual fellowship. Be as honest as possible in all things, especially with regard to what I am learning about myself, past and present. Express my feelings about myself, my family group, and its members, my recovery, and my relationship with God. Accept any discomfort or unsettling behavior changes that I, they may experience as a result of working the 12 steps. Humbly submit to the recovery process. Remember that God loves me and wants me to succeed and that my ultimate goal is to experience God's will in my life. Pray, meditate, and work the first three steps daily. Sign, participant, witness, date, witness, family, group, members. Pretty good stuff, right? It is a commitment. It's something that we need to commit ourselves to because if you really commit yourself to this, it works awesome, it'll change your life. But you have to do really, as much effort you put into this is how much you receive from it. So you can do it half-heartedly, but you'll only get the half-hearted result. But if you go all in with this and let it work, it'll change your life. That's why we do it. So we can start a movement. Amen? So now you've seen some of the questions in there, right? We're